Okay, so in this video, we're going to finish up our unit about energy um, and talking about the concept of power. Okay, so the last couple of videos, we've been talking about work. And remember, work is basically the transfer of energy to or from an object by a force. Okay, and so work has to do with how much energy is transferred. Power is a little bit different than work. Power is basically um, how quickly energy or how quickly work is done. Okay, so um, work has to do with how much energy was transferred. Power has to do with how quickly that energy was transferred. And so the equations for power, you can think of power, that's a capital P for power. You can think of that as work over time, or you could also think of that as energy over time. Okay, so how quickly energy or work is done or transferred. Okay, so if I move 100 joules of energy per second into an object, that is a power of 100 watts. And so the unit for power is the watt, which is also a capital W. So here's where uh, some people get confused, and it's completely understandable why. There's two W's here. This W represents work. Okay, power is work over time. Okay, work is the transfer of energy that's measured in joules. Time is measured in seconds, of course. The unit for power is the watt, which is also a W, and it's a capital W because it's named after a physicist, physicist named Watts. Okay, so there's two different Ws. Make sure you understand that one is a unit, one is a variable. Okay, so what is a watt? Okay, so one watt is equivalent to one joule per second and you might have heard of watts like when we when you buy like light bulbs or something like that you can buy like a 60 watt light bulb so a 60 watt light bulb uses 60 joules of energy per second okay so again work has to do with the transfer of energy how much energy is transferred to from an object power has to do with how quickly that energy is transferred in joules per second Okay, so work is in joules, power is in watts, and one watt is one joule per second. Okay, so the faster energy can be used or delivered, the higher the power. Okay, and so if you think of power lifting, for example, it's not just about like how heavy is the weight that you can lift, but how quickly can you lift it up. Okay, so we're going to do some basic calculation examples. Make sure you have this, um, all of this information down in your notes. We're going to do four different examples. Okay, so example one says, calculate, yeah, calculate the energy in joules that a 60 watt light bulb and a 100 watt light bulb emit in 30 seconds. First of all, notice, I know this is watt because it comes after a number. Okay, so that means it's a unit. Okay, um, if it was like W equals something, then that would be work. Okay, so this is 60 watts and this is 100 watts. Okay, the only thing measured in watts is power. And so basically, they give me the power of two different light bulbs. Okay, so let's look at the 60 watt light bulb first. We're asked to find the energy that is emitted in 30 seconds. Now, there's two ways to approach this. Either you can use the equation, power is energy over time. We know power is 60 watts, so we do 60 equals energy is the unknown. And then time is 30 seconds. So because energy is being divided by time, we want to multiply both sides by 30. Boop. And 30 times 60 is 1,800 joules. And so a 60 watt light bulb, if you leave it on for 30 seconds, that's going to use 1,800 joules of energy. Now the other way you could uh, answer this question is by understanding that a watt, one watt, is one joule per second. So if you just think of it like that, okay, so basically you buy a 60 watt light bulb, that means it uses 60 joules of energy every second. Okay, so every one second is 60 joules. So if we want, um, after 30 seconds, we would just multiply by 30. And 60 by 30 is 1800. All right, so that's the answer to the first question. Then for the 100 watt light bulb, we just do the exact same thing. Power is energy over time, blah, blah, blah. We get a plug-in. Now the power is 100. 
watts instead of 60 watts. And once again, we would just multiply both sides by 30. Boop. And we get the energy is 3,000 joules. All right, so surprise, surprise, in the same amount of time, the 100 watt light bulb uses more energy per second than the 60 watt light bulb, which makes sense, that's why that light bulb is brighter. Okay, so this is a very, very basic calculation involving power. Pause it here if you need to look at this more. Okay, so example 1.5, another basic example here. So we have a car motor, and this motor does 15,000 joules of work all right, so this is going to be my W. Notice, by the way, this is not 15,000 watts because I'm saying that the work in this problem is 15,000 joules. It's only watts if it comes after the number. Okay, so this W is work. So the car motor does this many joules of work every 30 seconds. So that's my time. Calculate the power exerted by this motor. So power is work over time. And so that would just be 15,000 divided by 30. And that would just be 500 watts. That is the answer to example 1.5. Okay, so again, we have a really basic example. The next two examples are going to be a little bit more involved. Okay, so make sure you pay close attention to take good notes. Okay, so let's take a look at example 2. So example two says two weightlifters, Sam and Cam, each lift their respective weights as quickly as they can. Sam lifts his 100 kilogram barbell, so this is mass because it's kilograms, a distance of 0 0.35 meters in 0 0.4 seconds. Cam lifts his 1200 newton, remember capital N, that's newton, that's force, barbell a distance of 0 0.5 meters in 1.2 seconds. The first question says, which one does more work in lifting their barbell? Okay, so if we want to know which one does more work, obviously we need to find the work done by Sam and the work done by Cam and see which number is bigger. Okay, so remember from a couple of videos back, so we're going to do Sam first. From a couple of uh, videos back, work is force times distance. Okay, but I want you to take a look at Sam. So Sam is lifting his barbell. The barbell has a mass of 100 kilograms, but 100 kilograms is not a force. Okay, that's just mass. Okay, so listen carefully because I'm going to give you a trick to doing this type of problem. If we want to calculate the work, we need the force and we need the distance. We have the distance because the distance is given. It's right there. So what force does he exert? Here's the trick. If we know the mass of the barbell, the force required to lift something is equal to the force of gravity, right? Because force of gravity is weight. And so the force Sam has to exert is not 100 kilograms because that's not a force, that's a mass. But he has to exert, uh, exert a force equal to the weight of the barbell. And remember, force of gravity is given by Fg equals mg. And so this is going to be the force he actually has to exert. And so that's going to be the mass, which is 100, times g, the acceleration due to gravity, which is 10 meters per second squared. And so if it's a 100 kilogram barbell, the force he has to exert is 1,000 newtons. Okay, so basically we're taking that mass and converting it to a force, essentially. So when I go to find the work done by Sam, work equals force times distance, the force is then going to be 1,000 newtons times a distance of 0 0.35 meters. And so that's going to be 350 joules. OK, so let's take a look at camp. Let's see if we can figure out the work done by camp. OK, now the trick here is that if you look at what, uh, what they tell us about camp, 
they give us the weight of the barbell already, 1,200 newtons. That's already a force. They're already giving us the force of gravity for the barbell. So when I get a plug into the equation, work equals force times distance, the force is 1,200. And the, uh, the distance is 0 0.5. Okay, so you just need to pay close attention, make sure you understand, are they giving me a force, which is in newtons, or are they giving me the mass, which is in kilograms, and then I need to convert that to newtons using this equation up here. Okay, so make sure you pay close attention to the, to the units uh, of everything in your problems. Now, which one exerts more power? This is a more straightforward calculation because power is work over time. And so all I have to do is do the work over time for each of these two guys. All right, so which one did more work? That was definitely Cam. Let's see who's more powerful. Okay, so Sam's power, so power is work over time. That's going to be 350 divided by 0 0.4. And so I'm going to go to my calculator, and I'm going to type in 350 divided by 0 0.4. That's 875 watts. And now let's try to get the power uh, from Cam. So again, power is work over time. Cam's power is 500. Um, sorry, not his power. His The work he does is 500 joules. And he lifts that in 1.2 seconds. Okay, so I'm going to do 500 divided by 1.2, which is 4. I'm going to run it up to 417 watts. It's like 416.666, whatever. But let's say 417 watts. Okay, so who's more powerful? Well, it turns out Sam is more powerful. So even though um, even though Cam is lifting a heavier weight, Sam is actually more powerful because even though he's not quite as strong like in raw strength, he makes up for it in being able to lift a smaller weight much, much faster. Because if you look at the values, Cam is lifting a heavier barbell, but it's only it's not that much heavier, right? Whereas if you look at the times, Sam is actually lifting it three times faster than Cam. Okay, so that's the difference between work and power. One has to do with just the, just how much energy it took to do that. Power has to do with how quickly was that energy delivered. Okay, so Cam does more work. He puts in more joules of energy, but he does it a lot slower, so he's not as powerful. Okay, so that's got, that is the concept of power. Pause there and make sure you add that to your notes. Okay, so for our last example, we have example three. We have Patrick and Kyle, and they both have a mass of 60 kilograms, and they run up a hill which is 10 meters high. It says Patrick takes two seconds and Kyle takes 10 seconds. Which boy did the most work and which boy was the mo most powerful? Okay, so this is similar to example two. Okay, so I want you to start off by um, trying to do the first part of example uh, three on your own which boy did the most work so you have to calculate the work done by patrick and the work done by kyle make sure you read everything that you're given carefully um, and pay close attention to the units okay so try to do that now okay so remember um, that work is force times distance so let's look at patrick for uh force patrick first okay so Work done by Patrick, force times distance. What is the force? Well, Patrick has a mass, not a weight, but a mass of 60 kilograms. So to find the force, we have to use Fg equals mg and do 60 times the acceleration to gravity, which is 10, and that's 600 newtons. Okay, so when I go to find the work done by Patrick, the force is 600 the, the distance, well, he goes up a hill and it's 10 meters high. So the distance he travels is 10 meters. In other words, he's lifting his own body weight up the hill. Okay, so that, the, that work is 6,000 joules. But it turns out that Kyle is lifting the same weight because they both have, have the same mass. All right, and so the force that Kyle has to exert is also 600 newtons. The distance is also 10 because they both ran up the same hill. So basically they have the same mass, they have the, the same hill to go up, and so they both 
expend the same amount of energy, which is 6,000 joules, and so neither boy did more work. Now, which boy was more powerful? Okay, so now I want you to try to figure out uh, the power exerted by Patrick and Kyle. Okay, so again, power is work over time. So if we go back to Patrick, work over time, that's 6,000. Divide by the time for Patrick, which is 2 seconds. So 6,000 divided by 2 is 3,000 watts. For Kyle, again, we have work divided by time. The work is the same, 6,000 joules, but the time is now 10 seconds. And 6,000 divided by 10 is 600 watts. Okay, so they both did the same amount of work. They both uh, lifted the same weight over the same distance, so they did the same amount of work. But Patrick was more powerful because he, he did the, the same amount of work in a shorter time. Okay, so again, work is about the transfer of energy to or from an object. Power is about how quickly energy is used. Okay, how many joules per second energy is being delivered. Okay, um, so that is it for our examples, and we're now done with the energy unit. As always, please let me know if you have any questions, and I'll see you guys in the next video.